What's good, man? It's your homeboy T Pain, aka your girlfriend's boyfriend. And right now, you're checking out Take Flight. Let's get it. Hey, yo, what's good? It's your boy Wings of Take Flight. We are here backstage, Canberra Juicy Fest. I haven't got to say it. Hey, man. Legend in the building. <laughs> T Pain, how are you, bro? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good, bro. I got to kick this off by telling you a little something real quick, man. Okay, okay. This platform for us started two years ago. The first ever yeah. video we dropped was you reacting to an Australian artist called 1-4. Oh, yeah, 1-4. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can I just say, bro, that was the biggest drop for us in so long, and it was our first ever video. So I got to... Really? Bro, it was... That's dope, man. There's more to talk to about that, yeah, but yeah. Like, that was just a great, a crazy nah, full circle moment for it, us. How's Juicy Fest been for you, bro? Juicy Fest has been good, man. It's been really fun. Everybody is kind, you know. Treat people well, you get treated well. So, you know, I always roll by that motto. So everything's been great for us, man. You know Come what on, I mean? Bro. A special moment I seen online was over in New Zealand. Yeah. They came out on stage, pumped the hucker for you. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about how you felt in that moment, bro. Oh, man, I cried for sure. I cried a lot because, you know, anytime I'm even at home, yeah. just having a, a subpar day, like I'll throw on a few hackers. You know what I mean? And just on. if I need to, like, let something out, like I'll throw on some real heartfelt stuff and, you know, get some hackers in there. Um, you know, so I, I'm, I like frequently watch Hawkers a lot, and True. that was my first time seeing one in person. Okay, okay. I had never, I had never seen one in person. It was just, it was, it was so different because you know when you see it from different camera angles and stuff like that, it, you know, it kind of induces the heartfeltness of it. But you know, when you see it in person, it's, it's surreal, man. It got to you straight. Yeah, up. Is absolutely. that the first time you've been in New Zealand after all these years? No, no, no. That was like, my second time. This is just the first yeah, yeah. time they came and dedicated absolutely. something to you. Absolutely. But tell me how you feel. What do you think Juicy Fest is contributing to the culture out here by putting on a this kind of show filled with so many legendary acts, bro? Yeah, this is different. I think this is the most different tour that I've ever been on, actually. Okay. Uh, usually, you know, there's some up and coming openers, there's some, you know, local people and stuff like that. This is all headliners. You know what I mean? This is this is just a roster that's all headliners, and I don't know how they put it together, but Somebody got a lot of money. So. Come on, bro. <laughs> T.I. called the owner Batman, and Batman just made it happen. I'm bro. telling you. Shout out to Prado, man. Come yeah, on, yeah. <laughs> Since we're at Juicy Fest, bro, we're looking for a juicy story. But when I say that, I'm talking yeah. juicy studio story. So whether it's right. something you, a time you're in the studio, came up with one of your iconic songs, something wow. that happened, and a, a collab that never came about. Wow. Anything you've got off the top of your head, bro. Woo! Come man. on. Um, man, the Kiss Kiss Beats. I made the Kiss Kiss beat for R. Kelly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. R. Kelly didn't like the beat. Then I, my next studio session was with David Banner, and I showed him the beat. He recorded a song to the Kiss Kiss beat. He just never did anything with it, and I still had the beat when I met up with Chris Brown. And then Chris Brown let me write the song history, to it. And then, right. Yeah, and then history was made. So. How long after you did the beat did it actually come about? Uh, man, this is probably... Two and a half years. Okay. Yeah. So you know, you know, all those beats you got in your hard drive, just keep them. Just keep them there. The day may come. Keep showing them to people. The day may come. Keep just. It don't matter how many times you've heard the beat. It's gonna sound old to you, but it's new to them. All those beats you got in your hard drive, just keep showing them to people, or put them on YouTube and let somebody use it for free. Steal if you're like not that. gonna do it. If you're not gonna do anything Why with not, it, bro? just put it on YouTube. T-Pain might find it. Probably not. But <laughs> right. You probably know what I'm yeah. um, Look. Quick throw back to the reaction videos I was talking about. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed the impact of just you reacting to a song can have on an artist? Not really. No? I haven't noticed it because once because it's not like a it's not like a motive behind it. Of you course. know what I'm saying? It's like a natural thing. Is I'm, I'm reacting naturally to something. And once I react, it's like, all right, cool. Don't need to follow that. I, I got my first impressions and that was there that we was go. It. And then I start seeing news about it. But it's, you know, I don't realize, you know, that there's a whole impact and a whole a new a new set of lights afterwards, you know what I mean? Bro, so well, I, let I me kinda, tell you yeah. at that time when you reacted to people like One Four, yeah. we'll talk about uh, another little friend of yours a bit later. Yeah. But <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, One Four, there was a heap of artists out here, Young and Lips, Posse Shot. Yeah. It created a buzz in Australia like I've never seen before in the local scene, right? Really? It was going absolute bananas. People were sharing it like crazy. People were just like, wow, T Pain is really creating a buzz down under just by helping us out. But can I say, I heard <laughs> that people thought that you've done more for the Australian scene than Iggy Azalea did. Not to take anything away from Iggy Azalea. Damn. She's done some crazy shit for herself, but... Damn! Yeah, man. So, <laughs> shout out to Iggy, man. Yeah, yeah, shout out to Iggy, shout too. Shout out to Iggy. But I love you, I love you, that, man. Obviously, you met your man, Mason Dane, via yeah, that. Yeah, man, Mason Dane. That was, that was, that's still going, you know what I mean? Of like, course. you know, he came out on stage with me at one of the Juicy Fest shows. That was, it was awesome, man. It's a, it's a cool friendship that we still have going to this day, so... What was it about Mason that 
you took to straight away? Because it was a pretty quick connection. There. Yeah, I mean, it's the same thing that I love about most of my favorite artists. Like, Mason don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Like, Mason don't care what you say. Like, you can tell he just exudes confidence. Like, there's nothing about him that says, do you, you know, do you like me? Or I need validation from other people. It's just Mason, man. You know what I mean? He's a, he's a big fluffy guy. Come on. Big you know fluffy I mean? cloud. I think big, you called him at the time. Big, big fluffy cloud. Come so, on, Mason. You know, I'm sure he's used to people, you know, discredit him just for, you know, just for being how he is and just for being who he is and being white and, you know, just like all kinds of stuff. He's got a lot of stuff working against him. Yes. So when you know you have good music and when you know you have a talent and you exude that confidence, that that negates all that shit. You, know, that, you know what I mean? I ain't meant yeah. to that, bro. Hey, obviously you're big on the streaming side of things right now. Yeah. Or you have been for a while. Yeah. You've diversified yourself in so many ways. How important do you think it's been for yourself to diversify yourself as an artist more than just, you know, locking yourself away in a studio? Yeah, so <laughs> it's very important. I think it's very important to diversify. I don't think it's... I don't think it's important to diversify for business wise. Like, you know, you know, it's not really a necessary thing for me on the business side of it. It was necessary for my mental health. It was necessary for my well being because I needed to do something else. And I was always doing these things. But now that it's coming to the light and people get to see the background of my personality and people get to see what I do when I'm not in the studio, I mean it's it's just it's easier. You know what I mean? It's it's a to make it a part of my life. You know, they always say, find something that you like doing and find a way to get paid for it. You know what I mean? Just do what you love and you never work a day in your life. So I'm just in that phase of my life right now. So, you know, my work is my hobby. Come on, bro. Yeah. Look, I got to go on to something that's a bit more current. Mm -hmm. I think, and a lot of people are out there, you deserve your flowers for everything you've done over the years, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely do, bro. I got to yeah. say, right? Thank you, man. But for some reason, online, there are a lot of people who seem to not know that you can sing your fucking ass off to this day. Is it as strange to you as it is to me to this day? It's not strange. It's a little frustrating because, you know, you try to explain that to people and they're like, nope, I know what I know. I heard you. That was auto doing. I know what that is. That's for people that can't sing. And I know everything about singing. Even though I'm not a singer, I know everything there is to know about singing. So there it is. And that that's the only part that gets frustrating. And we get, you know, every two or three years or so, there's a new batch of people that just haven't seen they're still i saw a tweet today that said t-pain needs to do a tiny desk concert and right. i'm like okay what <laughs> we got <Yeah>. that <laughs> that should have proved everyone wrong already <laughs> yeah but the fact that you don't even know and didn't even take the time to look but you took the time to tweet that like you came up with this genius idea mm. like come on man bro. figure it out <laughs> hey, man. Bro, well, lastly bro look on top of the covers is obviously something that kicked off that conversation yeah, where you proved yourself Yet again, again, you don't have again. To. but obviously someone that um, came online and co-signed what you're doing, Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah, man. How does it feel to wake up, look online, and see a legend like himself co-signing something you just done? That was so cool, man. You know, because I've met Ozzy once, and that you know he's a cool dude, man. So to be accepted in that genre, to be accepted in that part of the culture, even when the fans don't, you know what I mean? Because before Ozzy said anything, all the metalheads were like, "Nah, don't like it. We're not doing this." Even though it was good, I know it was good. I say Osborne knows it was good. Come on, you know what I mean. But to have people just reject it just because I don't fit in the genre, it was kind of frustrating. But you know, when the king, when 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 the sir, you know, when the knight says it, cannot be proved wrong. That's it. It's over. All right. I appreciate your time. Yes, Thank you sir. again. Thank You're gonna you, kill brother. that stage already. I'm gonna try. It's your man. boy Wings. It's Take Flies. T Pain. Yes, sir. We are.